Shalom, shalom, giving honor and praise to the creator and to the maker of heaven and earth. Want to go over something due to the controversial issue that's been presented. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 21, verse 16. And we're going to be reading first in this here. The Masoretic text. Then we're going to read the King James, okay? Leviticus chapter 21, 16 reads the, as follows. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, saying, Whosoever he be of thy seed, throughout their generations, that hath a blemish, let him not approach to offer the bread of his God. For whatsoever man he be that hath a blemish, he shall not approach a blind man or a lame, or he that hath anything maimed, or anything too long. Now that right there is Leviticus chapter 21 verses 16 through 18 in the Masoretic text. Now we're going to read it in this here. The regular standard Bible, the King James Version. 2118 or 2116 says, And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, saying, Whosoever he be of thy seed, in their generations that hath any blemish, let him not approach to offer the bread of his God. For whatsoever man he be that hath a blemish, he shall not approach a blind man or a lame, or he that hath a flat nose, or anything superfluous. Now, one of the things to sit there and point out is that fact that some people like to quote Leviticus chapter 18, pardon me, Leviticus chapter 21, verse 18, to try to insinuate the idea that the Bible or the scriptures is a white man's book and that having a flat nose like black people have a flat nose is a blemish. But that's not what it says emphatically in the Hebrew, the language that does belong to black people. Now, I want to go into Leviticus chapter 21, if you will. Leviticus 21, we're going to start, we're going to read in this here. Leviticus 21 verse 16 through 18 in the Hebrew. And here is what we read. So we can gain an understanding concerning this matter, all right? It says the following. Why da bir ya el Moshe le mor? The Moshe has spoken to Moses, saying, Da bir el aharon le mor. Ish mezar aka, any man of your seed, the Dorotam, throughout their generations, Asher yihye. Bo, who has against him moon a blemish, lo yikrab lahakrib lechem, he shall not he shall not approach to offer lechem the bread of Elohio his God. Now, one of the things to point out in Hebrew is this word right here, which is the Hebrew word kwarab, which means to approach or to come near. If you see, you got the kuf, the resh, and the bet, and then we hear see the kuf, the resh, and the bet. Both of these words. Have a similar root pattern when you study it. This right here, for those familiar, is in the qual stem. This right here being the hifil stem. To approach or come near, the causative, the hifil, meaning one who does an offering. Because when you're offering something, you're causing something to be brought near. The hif, the hifil is the causative of the qual. Okay, so that'll be discussed in other times. Lechem Elohio, the bread of his God. Ki kol ish. For any man, I share the bow, which has against him moom, a blemish. Lo yikrab ish, iwer, a man who is blind, he shall not come near. O piseach, O karom, O sarua. Now, the key word I want to point out is this word right here, which is the Hebrew word karom. Now, brothers and sisters, for those who may be aware, the Hebrew word karom. Unfortunately, in the King James Version, is translated as flat nose. But as we see in the Masoretic text, it is translated as anything that is maimed. So now what we're going to do is go into, brothers and sisters, the book of Zechariah. We're going to start in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 11, even in the King James. And let's read what it says from there so we can gain an understanding concerning this kind of matter. So... Let's be the most high during the course of the time. We will be making presentations and videos of this kind of nature. 
All right, we are in, brothers and sisters, the book of Zechariah, chapter 14, verse 11. And we're going to read in the English here, and it says the following. And men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. Now, this is talking about the future of the people in the land of Jerusalem, right? So let that be noted and understood. Now, let's go, if you will, brothers and sisters, into the Masoretic text of that same portion so we can see what we're speaking on, all right? We're in the book of Zechariah, nonetheless. We're in chapter 14. We are in verse 11, right? And it reads as follows, so we can gain an understanding concerning this kind of matter. And men shall dwell therein, and there shall be no more extermination, but Jerusalem shall dwell safely. So in one case, we see we, are, we see extermination in one part in the Masoretic text, and then we see utter destruction in the King James Version. Now, here's where the issue comes into play at, because now when we get into the Hebrew, the language that the scriptures is written in, we're going to go into Zechariah, right? Chapter 11, verse 14 and read it in the Hebrew, chapter 14, verse 11, sorry, and read it in the Hebrew. And here, brothers and sisters, is what we read so we can gain an understanding, right? It says the following. We yashbu ba, and they shall dwell in her. We kerem lo yichye od. Now the Hebrew word tebak, the betak, sorry. This is not tebak, this is betak, sorry about that. And so one of the things to point out is betak, brothers and sisters, means safety. It comes from the Hebrew root word batak, which means to trust. Now, brothers and sisters, it distinctly says, why Yeshbu ba, and they shall dwell in her. This key word right here is what I wanted to point out with Kerem. All right. Now, this is the key word right here because this is the same root word like the word Karum, which truthfully does not mean anything about a nose. It basically means utter destruction or extermination. So that's one of the key words I have wanted to point out. Now, inside of this dictionary, the Ben Yehudas pocket dictionary, here is what we see under the same definition, right? We see this word right here, which is the Hebrew word karma. And that's translated as extermination or destruction. Then we see the root of it also used in the verb, meaning to exterminate or to destroy, as we see right there. So that right there, brothers and sisters, is very, very important to let it be noted and understood what exactly that we're speaking on. All right. So basically... In concluding this particular subject, it's to be noted that the scriptures is not speaking in reference about flat noses. It is not speaking in reference about a racial terminology or anything of that sort. When you read, brothers and sisters, in the Masoretic text, it distinctly says of anything that is maimed, maimed, anything that is exterminated or anything that is destroyed. That is the root word there from the Hebrew root word karam. That's why the Hebrew word karama means utter destruction. All right. So with that, shalom.